Just to point out, this is a really long video, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I'll be putting uh, shortcuts in the description bar so you can skip forward to the topic you are looking for. Hey everybody, it's me X Rainbow, and I'm here with a new series of video I'm going to be making. Uh, basically, it's a short series showing you how to make gold if you're either new to WoW or you just don't know what you are doing. I'm going to be making several videos covering different areas of gold making, and hopefully you learn a thing or two. Even if you are an experienced gold maker, I'm sure I might cover some things you weren't aware of. Um, so today I'm going to talk about what gold is, um, how you can make it, how to use the auction house in the mailbox, and how to get the most out of trade chat. Um, this is all pretty much basic beginner stuff, uh, so if you feel like it would be beneficial to you, then you may want to wait for my next video where I go more into detail about gold making, but this is basically just summarising the basics for those who um, aren't as knowledgeable. Um, I'm also going to be covering how to decipher what all the gold makers are saying with their sort of gold chat acronyms and all that sort of thing, um, and any other things I can think of between now and then. Uh, I only moved this character to Storm Scale uh, a few days ago, so I am... Um, in a bit of a hectic mode right now. I'm trying to clear up all my bags of my transfer characters and get a guild bank set up. I'm planning to make, well I've got a level 25 guild here now which I am going to rename after my blog and I'll put all my characters into it and if you are on storm scale or you have an alt here you're most welcome to join it um, so I can help you out if you have any questions about gold making etc. So let's get to it. Um, first talk about what what is gold? Gold is at the bottom of your bags here. Um, it's divided into copper, silver. There's 100 copper in a silver and 100 silver in a gold. So each gold is, learn to do math, uh, 10,000 copper. Um, if you're a trial account, you can only have 10 gold at a time, which kind of sucks, uh, but I guess it's necessary to stop people abusing trial accounts. Um, the gold cap, which is the most gold you can ever have at one time on one character, is one copper under a million gold, so 999, nine, nine, etc. Um, you can have more gold than that, but obviously you will have to have it on a different character or in a guild bank. You will not be able to loot more gold once you've hit that cap. Um, also, I would really like to discourage anyone from buying gold because although it may be tempting to spend a few uh, euros, dollars, pounds, whatever your currency is on a website to give you gold, chances are you could get banned as well as the fact that gold could be hacked or it's just um, obtained through illegit illegitimate methods so I wouldn't recommend that. Um, anyway, so how to make gold yourself? It's pretty simple. You can sell items like I've got a bunch of items here. You could sell yourself, but that is illegal in a lot of countries. You could sell your ability to craft items, you know, ask for tips from professions. You could purely just craft items from professions and sell them. Or you could sell your ability to give people boosts through dungeons or help them get achievements. You can grind quests, dailies, uh, dungeons, you could farm materials. There's a lot of ways to make gold and I'll be going more in depth to the several the different methods of making gold in my future videos. Um, for now I'm just going to show you how to use the auction house for those of you who have never used it before or are still pretty confused on how to use it. I just want to add as well that if you're planning on moving realm or transferring a character across factions you can only have 50,000 gold to take with you. You will not be allowed to transfer if you have more than that. A lot of people get around this by investing their money into items and taking the items with them, but that can be difficult unless you buy really expensive items and you have to make sure you have a lot of space to store all the items you bring. Um, I didn't bring that much with me when I transferred because I brought it all over on my other character, which is lucky for me. Okay, uh, so opening the auction house, you can find auctioneers in all capital cities. Um, you can also track them on your map under Townsfolk as auctioneer and they'll show up as little gold coins on your mini map. So all you do is click on them. Um, ignore this stuff here, this is just some add-ons I have. The, the basic auction house is these first three tabs here. Browse, bids and auctions. So 
when you are buying something on the auction house, you go to the browse tab and you can search what you want. For example, I could want some linen cloth and if I press enter or search over here, it will bring up anything that has the term linen cloth in its name. In this case it has linen cloth but also has bolts of linen cloth. You can um, sort this by several different uh, categories so you can see what the co you can sort it by the lowest current bid or the highest current bid. Um, but I don't always find this is accurate. It can sometimes show you things that are more expensive at the top which you don't want. Um, I'll show you how to get around that with an add-on uh, in a different video. Um, so if you want to buy something you just click it and you can either bid on it. The bid is this top number here. If you bid on something there are chances you will get uh, outbid on. Someone else will bid on it and in that case your money will be returned to your mailbox. Um, the bidding ends obviously when this timer runs out. There is no um, exact time amount that this will run out in but it tends to vary between short to very long and if you hover over it you can see what that duration is. So I could bid on something here and as you can see it shows my bid up there. Uh, if I'm impatient and I just want it right now I can buy it out and that will have gone to my mailbox which is over there which I'll show you in a second. Uh, to sell an item, you well, your current bids are actually listed here. I, it, mine would have been there if I didn't just buy it out. If you want to sell an item, you go to the auctions tab and you see that item in your bag. For example, I want to sell this thing here, Living Ember. Um, it will it will give you a random price. I think that's based slightly above its vendor price. I'm not exactly sure. But um, if you want to, you can look up the price yourself so you know how much to sell it for. So if I search for Living Ember, I can see they're going for about 20 gold right now. So I could just type in 20 gold here. Oh, no, that's the wrong tab. Uh, okay, I want to type in 20 gold buyout. And I don't know, I'll go for a 15 gold bid. Um, you can now pick how long you want the item to be on the auction house, so 12, 24 or 48 hours. Each duration has a deposit fee. The longer you put it up, the higher the fee. If your item sells, you will receive that fee back. If your item does not sell, then the auction house will eat that deposit fee. So um, you should always be careful um, with selling things and the duration you sell them for because you could waste a lot of money on failed fees. So I'm going to list that and it's now up here with my other auctions. As you can see I also have some armor for sale or gear. Um, if this sells then it will jump to the top of my screen and it will show me how long until it arrives in my mailbox. So when you sell an item successfully you will get a message. Um, a buyer has been found for your whatever the item is. Usually it's displayed um, in your general tab but I have just set my chat up a bit differently so I can keep track of my auctions. Um, as you can see up here it actually takes an hour for the item well the item is sold to the player instantly but it takes an hour for the gold to arrive in your mailbox. I guess this is just a delay. Gold farmers I don't know it's kind of annoying sometimes I guess so you have to wait an hour for that gold but it will come to your mailbox eventually so um, you can this will fill up if you sell all your auctions so you just gotta wait be patient and your gold will come to you oh and one other thing I wanted to mention about the auction house is the phrase undercutting um, undercutting is used in real life as well it's an actual word for those who didn't know but basically it means if you're undercut it means someone will post something in the auction house for cheaper than you have. So if I am selling this sparkling river's heart for 21 gold, someone could have put it on for 20 gold, so that's less than mine, um, in which case I have been undercut and if I wish to sell it I should undercut them as well because the cheapest item is usually listed at the top so theirs will sell before mine will not only because it's at the top, at the top of the auction house but also because it's cheaper and people are cheap. Um, and yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I've made this section of the video a few times now, but something bad keeps happening. Uh, so now nah, fourth time lucky. 
Okay, so this is a mailbox. All mailboxes look different. It depends on um, you know the area. This is a torn themed mailbox. Uh, they are faction dependent usually, but there are lots of different designs. Um, mailboxes are outside inns and near auction houses usually. If you want to track them on your map, you can go to Townsfolk Mailbox and you will be getting a little white envelope as well as if you hover over it, it tells you you've got a mailbox there. So this is a default UI of a mailbox. Um, you can only see a maximum of 50 mails at any one time. It will just stop. Even if you have more mails, you will not be able to see them unless you remove these mails Then more will load. Your mailbox does take 60 seconds to refresh itself. So after you first open it, it will take 60 seconds to update um, You know, with more mails you may have received during that 60 second period. Uh, so do not be alarmed if you buy an auction and it's not in your mailbox. It will probably be there in a minute if you just wait for it to refresh. Um, okay, so if we open this mail here that I bought, it's often the same one that I bought earlier, but it will do for now. So you can see this item I bought, the amount I bought, the person who sold it to me and how much they sold it to me for. I can then click on the item and it will put it into my bags and delete that mail. Um, as you can see, it's a single scroll here but the rest of these boxes. The reason there'd be a box is because there's multiple items in the mail. If it's a single item it will display that icon there. Um, here's the sold item and it will show me what it, what I sold her and who sold it to me and how much I sold it for. Then there is the auction house cut. The auction house cut is basically um, a percentage that is taken off everything you sell. It's 5% for the normal auction house, faction auction house. Uh, and there's a 15% cut for the neutral auction house, which I'll be showing you in a bit. Um, it's okay, so that's your inbox done. If you go to send mail, then you can type someone's name in. See, my friend has logged in here, so I will type in Zaladon, which is his name. Um, and I want to send him something. So let's see, if I send him some dust, perhaps. If I send him one dust, it will put the name Spirit Dust there because there's only one so it doesn't give me a number but if I put a whole stack of 20 in it will put the number afterwards however if I put tons of other different items in it will not change the name because it's the first item in the mail that affects the name however I can get rid of this and change it to something else okay so I wouldn't recommend you mailing people like this because you know <laughs> you get hate but I can do this to this guy. Uh, so down here we have two options. You can either send money to a friend, so you know, send 100 gold, or you can COD or COD, <coughs> which means cash on delivery. Cash on delivery basically means um, you can send the mail to this person. When they receive it, they will have to pay this amount in order to be able to withdraw any of the items from the mail. So if I send all this to my friend, he will have to pay me 100 gold if he wishes to take the items out. Uh, basically, it's another way of selling items to players. You can send them what they want with a COD sum, and they will have to send you the gold in return. It's basically anti-scamming, because they have to give you the gold if they want the items. Um, when you, It will take an hour for any mails to arrive at someone's mailbox unless you have the guild perk which is guild mail. In-game mail sent between guild members now arrives instantly otherwise usually it would take an hour to arrive um, which kinda sucks but uh, what else can I say about the mailbox uh, mails will last for 30 days in your mailbox after that they will be returned or deleted depending on their source. If it came from another player it will be returned. If it came from the auction house it will be deleted because it cannot be returned to the auction house. Um, you can get a lot of add-ons that upgrade your mailbox to allow you to open all your mails with the click of a button instead of, you know, for example, having to go through all this and clicking them one by one to take them out. Um, which is very handy because, you know, if you have hundreds of mails or hundreds of items in your mailbox, you do not want to take them out one by one. Uh, Postmaster, such a lovely guy. Uh, anything that I have missed about the mailbox? I do not think so. 
Okay, the last thing I want to mention about the auction houses, um, like I said earlier, there is a neutral auction house. Usually you have a faction auction house, which basically means all the auction houses on the Horde side in Horde cities can only be accessed by the Horde. Um, however, there are a few auction houses known as a neutral auction house, which can be accessed by both Horde and Alliance. However, it charges you a lot more to list your items there and it takes a larger auction house cut from your the gold that you make. Like I said, it's 5% for a faction and 15% for a neutral auction house. There are three neutral auction houses in the game. They look exactly the same as normal auction houses, they're just usually run by goblins. Um, there is one in Winterspring, in Everlook, which is here. There are oh, did we close that? There are two in Eastern Kingdoms, I think. One in Booty Bay in the, in the Cape of Stranglethorn at the bottom here. Uh, wait, no, the other one is actually back in Kalimdor. Oh, I keep closing my map. Zoom out. Down to Naris here in Gaj Zan is where the third neutral auction house is. There is also one more kind of auction house, which is the Black Market Auction House. That's a new addition to the game from this current expansion, Mr. Pandaria, which basically is, um, it won't really affect new players, it's more for rich players that have gold they want to throw away. The server will randomly generate uh, one of several items, such as a rare mount or a piece of gear that's no longer, or well, you can't get it very easily, and it will allow you to bid on that item. You cannot buy it out, you must bid and it lasts up to I think 48 hours. Um, usually starting around 20,000 gold for whatever the item is. So if you are rich and you feel like you have the money to spare then you can go to the Veiled Stair. Yes that rhymes. Uh, the Tavern of the Mists is here and the Black Market Auction House is about here. Uh, it's run, run by Madame Goya, the panda. She must be really rich. and all the items in that auction house are actually sold by NPCs in the game, you know, so uh, for example, pet vendors in the game may list pets. Though there, it's not actually them selling it, but they just use it as a name to make it seem more realistic. Uh, so that's about everything to do with auction houses and mailboxes that I can think of. Let me just recap with my own brain so I can think of if I've missed anything out. Okay, last and not least, I'm going to go through a list of do's and don'ts for gold making. Uh, do be polite with people you trade with. They could give you, you know, a cheaper discount or they might contact you in future to sell you an item that you're interested in. Uh, it's always a good idea to take gathering professions when you first start playing the game. So, mining, skinning or herbalism. If you take mining, you may find taking jewel crafting with mining can be more profitable if you prospect the ore into low level gems because a lot of people do not do that. So there's always a huge demand for low level gems, such as shadow gem. Um, and you can sell them for quite a lot of gold actually, sometimes more than you could sell herbs or, or leathers. Uh, you should do your best to vendor any items with a grey name. That means they are trash quality, vendor quality. You don't really need them, so just vendor them to any NPC. Um, unless you are an enchanter, so you can disenchant items, you should just vendor soulbound items that you no longer need because they take up a lot of space, which you could be um, saving for other items. Uh, when you're listing on the auction house, uh, you should list common items such as materials uh, for a shorter period of time, for example 12 hours, because you will be undercut very fast. However, if you're selling things like rare gear or recipes, then 48 hours is never really harmful. Uh, you should greed on every item that drops, really, um, because some BOEs that drop in dungeons can be worth thousands of gold. A BOE, by the way, is something that says it's it says bind on equip. Um, I don't know if I have one of my bags. Probably not. If I go to the auction house here and just search for a piece of gear. Uh, as you can see on the top of the, the tooltip under the name it says binds when equipped which means you can trade it until you wear it. Uh, when you wear it it becomes soul bound which means you cannot trade it. Um, if you 
explore a lot and you come across a lot of vendors, you should always do your best to buy out any limited uh, recipes. For example, if something is limited, it will have a number with brackets around it, which means perhaps they'll only sell one of those every six hours or something. If it's a recipe, I always encourage you to go and buy it um, because it could be very rare and you could sell it for a few hundred gold, if not a few thousand gold. Uh, chances are there will be a lot in the auction house, but you still will be able to sell it for you know 100 gold or so, which can be a lot to a new player. Um, I know trade chat can be a bit, uh, how do you say, intimidating when you first start, uh, but you can find a lot of cheap deals in there if you keep your eye on it, so don't be too alarmed by it. You just sit back if you're bored and just have a look, learn how the traders work, and if you see a good deal, don't be afraid to snap it up. Um, I really do recommend buying bigger bags as soon as you can because when you first start the game your bag is like this big and you cannot put anything in it at all. Um, the best bags you can buy as a new player really are nether weave bags, a bag rather, they're very cheap. Um, this is a different add-on I use, I'll explain about it in a different video, but basically it just speeds up my searching for me. Uh, there's a lot of netherweave bags on this realm, so as you can see the netherweave bag, 30 gold, it may seem a lot, but there are 16 slots, so your bag will grow considerably if you replace all your bags with netherweave bags. Um, so you'll have more room to collect stuff to sell. Uh, please don't scam people, I mean I know it may be tempting to get a few thousand gold f by you know, cheating someone out of an item or lying or whatever, but in the long run you will get a really bad reputation and it's just not a good thing to do. I would never scam anybody. And do your best not to fall from scams fall for scams. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, I would not recommend taking crafting professions except for jewel crafting when you first start playing the game or if you're a low level because you will not be able to afford materials unless you are insanely rich, in which case why are you watching my video? No, I'm just kidding. But also, I wouldn't recommend vendoring all your items because a lot of items are worth more money than you'd think. For example, linen cloth. People assume if something has a white name that they should vendor it. That's never the case. Never the case at all. For example, if I look up um, uh, bear meat. Is it bear meat? That's not what I wanted. Trade goods. Big bear meat. For example, it still sells for 50 silver, which can be a lot to new player. A lot of, lot of these things are required for cooking. Um, I would recommend vendoring white gear or armor that has a white name if you got it from a quest or something, because there are some rare items with white names, but it's highly unlikely you got them from a quest. Um, I wouldn't recommend listing really common items for more than 12 hours, as I mentioned earlier, because you'll get undercut way too fast and it's just a waste of auction house fees. Please, for the love of God, do not need everything that drops in a dungeon. Not to mention, they recently Im... Im, Im what is the word? I can't think of the word. Okay, they recently put into the game that if you need on all items, they will become soulbound to you. So if you see a rare recipe drop and you ninja it, and you when ninjaing it, I mean you take it when you don't you don't actually need it, um, it will become soulbound to you. So you won't be able to trade it, and then you are screwed. Not to mention everybody in your dungeon will hate you and probably kick you. Um, don't go crazy and spend all your money at the auction house. I um, mean, and, and you're trying to make gold, so you don't want to spend it. You want to spend as little as you possibly can. The only thing I personally buy from the auction house is materials. Otherwise, I just make everything else myself. Um, I also buy recipes, even though they're quite expensive, but I have the gold to spare. It may be tempting to buy a piece of armor or a weapon, but chances are you'll find something much better from a quest or a dungeon in an hour or so, so you would have wasted several hundred gold. Not to mention with the transmog nowadays, a lot of green items are really, really expensive. Uh, if you don't have the motivation to sell items right now, then I would recommend mailing them to a different character that you own, so you can go back there another time and try to sell them then. I know it would be tempting to vendor your whole inventory some days when you just don't have the motivation, but you could be vendoring thousands of gold, and I would not recommend it at all. Um, also, please do not undercut people really, really crazily on the auction house. For example, um, 
if I look at some of the the gem markets, uh, let's see, uh, Misty Wild Jade. Uh, as you can see here, the price started at seventy gold, but somewhat undercut by almost ten gold. And see how much the price has dropped. People keep undercutting by more and more, and now the gem is worth almost thirty gold less than it was at the start which is really bad because prices get pushed down and things become worthless. I know you may think, oh, if I list it for cheaper, people will buy it faster. That's not the point. The point is people will buy the item if they need it, no matter of the price. Um, you'll still sell it just as fast if it's, you know, one copper less than the 70 gold. Um, you're only ruining the market for yourself and everyone else by allowing them to make less profit on items they're selling. And finally, the opposite to that is please do not charge you know if this is worth 70 gold don't try and charge a thousand gold from it for it because you know no one wants to spend a thousand gold on a measly little gem it's just a waste of gold I personally don't like to sell gems for more than 300 gold because I feel like I'm ripping people off it's up to you how much you you want to sell items for but just take into consideration that you could be overcharging and uh, you've got to get it just right so you don't upset the economy and annoy the hell out of everyone. Obviously it's difficult to know when you're a new player how much things are worth um, so if in doubt just do a bit of research, you know, look on Wowhead or ask a friend. Many people know how much items are worth. If you're really really worried then just put it in your bank and have a go later if you see if there's more in the auction house so you can get a rough price estimate. Um, so yeah Okay, I totally forgot that I need to uh, redo a section of my video, which is how to understand what everyone is saying in trade chat. At the moment, I'm using an add-on which is called Bad Boy, which actually um, ciphers out a lot of messages that contain phrases I'm not interested in. So you may wonder why my trade chat is so slow. It's because a lot of messages are being deleted, so I can just see people buying and selling stuff mainly. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few of the acronyms that people use. Um, which you might want to know what they are about if you're planning to get involved in trade chat. So to start with we have WTB and WTS. These stand for want to buy and want to sell. So pretty much obvious that guy wants to buy a relic and this guy wants to sell a mechano hog which is a mount. Uh, there's also WTT which means want to trade if someone wants to swap an item for something else. Um, what else? LF here means looking for. They can also add a G on the end which means looking for a group for example for a raid uh, or you can be looking for someone with a profession. Um, K on the end of a number means a thousand so a guy is selling an enchant for three thousand gold. Gold is often used uh, well is is shortened to G as you can see here 55 G uh, instead of gold. Uh, a stack is the most a single item will uh, well stack into. So for example, I cannot have more than 20 of this item in one spot on my, my bank, it just won't go higher. But if I have less than 20, say I have two, time, two stacks of one, they two will merge into a stack of two. If you want to split stacks, you just uh, shift click them, type in the number you want to split, press OK and click somewhere else in your bag. Uh, some things stack up to, you know, I think 200 might be the maximum, I'm not 100% sure. I know volatiles stack to 200, but most, most things stack to 20. Um, any other acronyms I cannot think of? I can't see anything. Uh, people can type slash W, which means whisper me. So you can just slash whisper test. And uh, yeah, it will come up here. This is a... Uh, Windows Instant Messenger, so no one actually called test is online, as you can see, that's turned white. Uh, that's it really with trading, you, there's not much you need to know, the rest you just need to understand is what the items are. Uh, so that's it for trade chat, if you want to talk in trade chat, you can see there's number 2 next to it. You just type slash 2 and you are now talking in trade chat. Um, slash 1 is general chat. And if you go into your settings, you can enable or disable channels. You can even create your own. But that's usually not a very common thing to find. 
uh, since I started making this video yesterday, um, I've actually found out that although my internet is fast enough to stream, I have practically broken my computer's graphics card. I have a really, really bad graphics card. Um, I don't even remember what it's called. Oh yeah, uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT 230. That is extremely old and horrible. Um, when I tried to stream, I ended up repeatedly disconnecting and I actually think my graphics card overheated and now my computer keeps black screening. So that was a bad idea. So now I'm going to try and raise a bit of cash so I can buy a better graphics card that my friends are recommending for me to buy. So my stream is delayed for a little bit, which is unfortunate for me. Um, but the good news is that hopefully my guild will be up and running soon, uh, which is going to be called Wealthy on WoW, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, helping people or whatever you guys want me to do. Uh, for now, I'll just be making videos and updating my blog a bit more until Animal Crossing comes out. <coughs> I know I didn't say that. Okay, I must not say um or uh during this recording. This is the final part of the video. I apologise that the video was so long. It's because it contains so much information to help new players and obviously it won't apply to a lot of people who may have seen this. However, if you did manage to watch and you got to this point, good job. I hope that the video helped you out. If you have any questions, uh, feel free... Oh no, I said ah, oh, damn it, damn it. Uh, I'm not recording this again, so... If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. My next lesson will be about some basic add-ons to help you make gold as well as to make your UI a bit easier on the eyes. So that should be coming out in the next few days. And I will be writing on my blog as well, of course, which is wealthyonwow.blogspot.com if you feel like checking that out. I need to update it a bit more. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it, please leave any feedback if you think I can improve, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. So X Rainbow out!